Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome students to the online lecture of Digital Logic Design. In the today's lecture, we will be discussing the K-maps. Uh, in the last lecture, we discussed the standard forms. Uh, in the current lecture, we will be uh, discussing the uh, K-maps or the Kurnoff uh, map. Uh, this part of the course also belongs to the course learning outcome too. Uh, in the uh, gate level minimization, so far we have discussed uh, how we can minimize any given boolean function in terms of uh, literals and in terms of the terms uh, by using the boolean uh, postulates and theorem which we described in the last uh, lectures. Uh, in the this uh, part of the, the course, we will be discussing a more systematic uh, approach to this uh, thing, uh, which is known as the Kurnoff map or the K map. This is a you can say a more straightforward uh, method or systematic procedure. Uh, we will be focusing on discussing the uh, K K map for uh, less than uh, five input variables. Uh, because both of uh, these uh, terms are for the same uh, purpose, uh, the one with the boolean uh, function uh, and the second is with the, uh, the K-map. Uh, so uh, we can expect that uh, most of the result would be uh, quite same at the end. Uh, but uh, as you have seen in the Boolean uh, minimization part uh, that each user could end up with a different results because this is a no systematic procedure. Uh, each, each one of the you can follow a different path which could result in a different minimized expression. Uh, but if we follow the K-map K -map thing, usually it's a systematic procedure and uh, the result would be most probably the, the same uh, for uh, different users. So first we will be uh, discussing the K-map thing for the two variable uh, system. We will be discussing uh, the sections of the K-map uh, with reference to the number of the input first we will be discussing the two variable then we will be discussing the third and the fourth variable uh, k maps uh, for the two variable uh, k map uh, we know for any given uh, two variable system x or y uh, we have four combinations of the inputs uh, which we have commonly used 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 we know that each of them represent a separate uh, main term like this is representing the min term 0, this is representing the min term 1, this is representing min term 2 and this is the representing the min term 3. Uh, so the first step in the K-map thing is uh, we draw the basic map. We will not just process it, we will only just uh, draw the uh, K-map first. Uh, first what we do is uh, we draw different scares. Each scare is representing uh, a separate min term. So because there are total of uh, four min terms here, so we will draw uh, scares uh, which will be representing each term. So we are overall uh, drawing four scares. This is representing min term M0, M1, M2, and M3. Uh, we can also represent it in this way that if you consider this X as the uh, label or the a row number and Y as the column one, because uh, X could have a value of either zero or one. Uh, so if we have a, a value of x that is uh, equal to 0, we are basically representing the row 1. If we have x value equal to 1, then we are representing the second row. Similarly, if y is 0, it is representing the first column. And if y is equal to 1, it is representing this column. And if you can see that uh, these uh, main term values in terms of the Boolean expression is represented as x complement or y complement, we already know it. Uh, you can also write it as, say, 0, 0 here then we would have 0, 1 here because 0 is representing the row and 1 is representing the column and now this is in the ne next row so we will uh, we are uh, representing here it as 1, 0 and this is 1, 1. So in this way uh, we represent uh, our basic uh, K map and you can see that between any two adjacent scares between any two adjacent scares only the way there's a difference of one variable uh, this is 0, 0 and this is 1. So basically the 1 bit value is changed here. Similarly, you can also see the here that in case of these two, only the last bit value is a change. Similarly, same is from in between those, uh, these two. You can also check that only one value is changed here and similarly only one value is changed here. So uh, the, our first step is to just draw the K-map. Each uh, square here is representing a separate uh, min term. Uh, now we will see a uh, few examples that how we could uh, solve our uh, K-map using the 
boolean uh, functions which are represented in form of say min terms so uh, we are uh, now representing here the two basic function which we are very uh, using very commonly in this course and the and and the or operator say uh, for the and gate uh, we know that if you represent and gate in terms of the uh, functions or in terms of min uh, min terms we know that and gate only value is equal to 1 when both of the inputs are 1 otherwise for the all other value its value is 0 so what we do is that in uh, place of m3 because uh, only then the output value will be 1 uh, we have placed a 1 here representing that output at this min term is equal to 1 so for if we are representing the AND gate in a K map what we do is we place a 1 here and if you can see that the rest of the columns all or less of the scales are 0 means M0, M1 and M2 all values are 0 in this case where we have only the value of 1 so uh, there is uh, actually no simplification can be performed on uh, this term because simplification uh, could only be performed if we have adjacent scares with one uh, in this example there is no adjacent scare as or uh, no other scare with one so in this case what will happen is that that original term will hold because in this case a normal and operation is represented as xy so it will be representing again same as the xy now if we consider the or gate thing in OR gate, we have one at uh, locations when either one of the input is one or both of the input are one. So basically, we have three places where one is placed. At first, when both of the input, when y is one, we will have one here. Then similarly, when x is one, we will also have one at the output. And when both of them are one, we will also have a one at the output. Now, this is the first step uh, what we have done now. First, we draw the two variable k-map. And then we'll be, uh, then we put the value of one at places where the function's value is equal to one. And we know that for the R gate, the function value is equal to one at three min terms. So we have at each of the min term location, we have written one. So we have written one here, here, and here. Now what we do is we try to add the adjacent scares. We will see that whatever the adjacent scales lie if both of them are one we will count them as one or we will add them for example if you look at this in this example in both of these scales we have one so we just combine them like this and similarly we can also combine these two scales too although this one is included in this one and this one both of them so it's uh, permissible that uh, we can add one scale to two different uh, combinations so uh, we first need to add all those uh, scares which have adjacent and have values of equal to one we generally form the scares in form of the uh, power of two means uh, we could have uh, one scale or we could combine two scares we could combine four scares or we could combine eight uh, scale so generally we will combine them in, in this pattern either we will have a single scale in which no term is combined like uh, this one or either we will combine the uh, two uh, adjacent scale with the one having like this one but we have combined here this one or this one two or we will have a four co combination of four or eight we cannot have a combination of three uh, ones or we have cannot have a combination of five uh, once we only have to follow uh, this uh, pattern so you can see that uh, there are two adjacent scales that could be added one is this m1 with m3 and the second one is that m2 with m3 so uh, if you write just the expression of all in terms of uh, the main term we write it as m1 m2 and m3 and if you can uh, separately write each of the expression as because m1 is represented as uh, x complement y the m2 is represented as x y complement and m3 is represented as x y now what we need to do to minimize it uh, for say we, if you look at this scale the first one we only are just looking at this one just for the time being just ignore this other one just assume this one if you look at this uh, row and zeros it is represented by 00, zero 
and this m1 is represented here as 0 0 while for this column it is represented as one one if you uh, look at uh, these so this is uh, are the locations of the uh, both of them so this is one zero one now if you look at this there is only a difference of one bit among these two scale for this example if we consider these two one there is a only a difference of one bit meanings that if you consider because the first one is representing x and second one is representing y what we do here is that we ignore the value of the variable whose values is varying in these two locations and if you see that the value of x is basically varying because it was 0 here and it is 1 here now so what we do is we ignore the value of x here because its value is varying we will only keep the value of y here so in this case because we are only keeping the value of uh, y here we will get the final expression as y if the value of y is equal to 1 we will write it as y if its value is equal to say it was for example 0 then we would have written it, it as complement so this had only resulted in the value of y now we have to uh, do the same thing with the uh, uh, other one uh, with the uh, second uh, second row uh, now we have to uh, do the same thing uh, with the next one so this was our other two adjacent scares now for these adjacent two scares first we write their locations locations in terms of x and y say this will be uh, represented as uh, here x is equal to 1 and y is equal to uh, y is equal to 0 here and this is x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 here you can see that now in these two blocks the variable which is changing here is y because its value was 0 here and now it has become 1 here so what we do is we cancel out or ignore the value of the component or the variable which is changing and the remaining will become our minimized term here y so if you took at this column this will result in a simplified expression of y and if you consider these two which we have done earlier so this was x this was y, y. so now what we do is we add all the terms which are representing the a minimized term from each adjacent scares so this is now the final result will be y plus x so uh, we have solved uh, in a this in this way that first what we do is that uh, we have to to see that how many scares are uh, adjacent and adjacent scale is the uh, adjacent scale of 1 we will only consider the adjacent scale in which we have a value of equal to 1 like uh, this one this has a value of 1 this has value of 1 and this has a value of 1 then in the next step uh, what we will, we will do is we try to combine all these scares with the 1 uh, in a way that we form a a block of either two combined scares or either four combined scare or either eight combined scare uh, that must be in, for, uh, in the power of two so in this case we can have a maximum of uh, say four ones here uh, but uh, this place is zero here so what we can do is we can combine two uh, ones here like this one this is the first one and this one is the is second one uh, for the first one, we, uh, you can see that uh, in the case of the, uh, this first one, uh, we have a one variable changing and that variable changing between these two location is the x because x have value of 0 here and x have value of 1 here. So we ignore the uh, variable which has the value changing between these two adjacent scale. The remaining left will be the y. So this block is minimized now as y. 
and uh, if you want to write the original expression for this one so only for the y uh, block it, you can write it as because uh, originally uh, it was uh, represented as say x complement y plus x y and now you have minimized this to a single term y and if you can see this expression from the boolean algebra term you can also achieve the same result because you if you take y then you have x complement plus x here which will all result in one so the final result will be y similarly if for the other two blocks these two adjacent blocks if you write it expression we can write uh, its expression as x y complement or for this one we will uh, write it as x y you can take x common here so so from this block we will get x and from this one we will get y so the final uh, result here would be equal to x or y so in this way uh, we generally minimize any given uh, boolean function using the k map thing uh, we have so far only discussed the example of a uh, two variable uh, system what we need to do is we need to find the ones in the adjacent scales and uh, combine these adjacent scales in the form of power of 2 either 2 4 or 8 and then we have to check that which variable is changing the variable which is changing its value in this uh, combined scale we will ignore that and remaining will become our uh, result and now we will be extending the same form step uh, to a three variable uh, system uh, because in the previous we had only two variable x x and y and now we will be introducing an other input variable uh, called z so uh, in this case uh, what we do is uh, because for the three variable system you know that there are eight min terms involved in it and uh, we will write the each of the min terms as a sequence in represented in the form of a you can say a gray code so we will be representing them in a form of a gray code sequence actually it was also represented in the two variable system uh, but in the two variable system because we were only uh, using the first four terms it was not that uh, visible uh, so now it will become uh, more uh, visible because the first few terms are the same and after that we will see that uh, how we can express that so for the gray uh, uh, code if you remember that for between any two uh, uh, values uh, the value of only one bit values changes so if you write the equivalent of uh, the decimal in form of a gray code uh, you write that the first value is the 0 then 1 and then we have a value of 3 and after them we have a value of 2 so we will write them uh, rows in form of this gray code uh, sequence because if you see that its uh, value here is 0 0 0 0 here uh, this uh, value here is 0 2 uh, because actually uh, we are representing now the x as the row um, while y and z will now combinedly representing the a column thing so we will have x variable from here and y z value from here so the the next term here will be equivalent to uh, it will have the same value here as 0 is like this and uh, similarly it will have here this will be like 0 1 1 and this is, will have 0 1 0 if you can see the subscript it represent the same equivalent code uh, this is because they are written in the uh, gray code sequence so that's why we first have the m3 term and then we have the m2 term and similarly you can find the same thing here that first we will have the m7 term here and then we will have the m6 term here because we are uh, following the gray code sequence so you have seen that uh, similar to the uh, one uh, discussion about the two variable system uh, and the three variable system we have only increased the one uh, variable here now now you can see that all the min terms are represented in the same way you can also write them in form of expression 
each variable x, y, or z is complemented uh, for certain uh, scales and the uncomplemented for others, like this one. X is uh, 0 for uh, the four scales, upper four scales, but its value is 1 for uh, these scales. Similarly, uh, y's value is equal to 0 for uh, these first four scares, while its value is 1 uh, for the other four scares. And similarly, for the value of z, uh, it is equal to 0 in this and the last row, while its value is 1 in this one and the uh, this one. Uh, now, we will be uh, seeing that uh, any two, the same thing applies uh, uh, here to that. For any two adjacent scales in the map, uh, they will only differ by a variable of one. Uh, say one variable values uh, will be changing. Uh, one scale uh, here, when we are minimizing the things, of, you know, because this is a three variable system, any single uh, scale uh, will be representing, say, this kind of value, say, x, y, z, or either complemented or in uncomplemented form. It will have three literal terms. Uh, when we will combine any two uh, scares, uh, we say we have a one here and a one here, we combine two scares, then in that case, the resultant uh, would be in a form of this one, two variable, uh, two literals. Similarly, if we have a four, uh, we have four scares equal to one and we could combine them, then that would result in a single literal term like x. And if say all the values of the one, all the scales have value equal to 1, all the min terms have value equal to 1, uh, then that means that the whole function is equal to 1. For all the values of x, y, z, uh, it will value be equal to the 1. Now we will uh, discuss few examples to the three variable system uh, and we will see that uh, how we can uh, do the uh, calculation using uh, this. Uh, for the first example, First, uh, what we are given here is that uh, we are given uh, a function uh, which has these min terms 2, 3, 4 and 5. So first, uh, what we do is we just put the value of 1 here. We put 1 in the here, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in all these locations, what we did was we just simply put the values of a 1 here. And now we would uh, see that uh, which values of the 1 form an adjacent scale. Adjacent scales could be either horizontal or the vertical. They cannot be the diagonal one. Or simply you can just write that any scales could be adjacent if they have only a single variable changing between them. So uh, what we do is we first combine these two scales because these two have a value of 1. Uh, so we just combine them. And we apply the same rule which we discussed uh, for the two variable system. For any two adjacent scales, uh, we will ignore or remove uh, the variable whose uh, values is varying. So in this case, you say that uh, for this one, uh, we have x uh, we have x value equal to zero here, and we have y one and z one. Similarly, for this one, we have x zero, y one, and z zero. You can see that in this case, the value of the last variable, which is z, its value is changing here. So we will cancel out and the remaining one will become our minimized term. And how because x is in the zero form, so we, we will write here as x complement and y is one here, both of the case, so we will write here as one. So these two combined scales will represent uh, the minimized term in form of this x complement y. While we have an other scales that are adjacent in the same map, these are this one. And if you see that, uh, write the location here, that is as 1, 0, 0, and this is 1, 0, 1. And you can see that in this case, again, the last one is varying, means the value of z is varying here. So this term could be minimized as x into y complement. This will represent x and this 0 will represent y complement. So we have two terms here now, this one and the x, y complement. So we can represent uh, this expression or this Boolean function in terms of a minimized expression as this one using the k-map thing. Now we will discuss a few other cases which are uh, related uh, to the uh, k-map thing. 
Uh, in the K map uh, for the three variable uh, system, uh, there are not just the horizontal and the vertical uh, boxes which could be considered adjacent. Uh, there may be other boxes which may not be visible to use that uh, they are touching each other, but in fact uh, they are the, uh, adjacent. Uh, suppose uh, if you consider uh, this M0 and M2, say this one and the, this one. If you consider both of them, uh, because uh, you can write here its value as 0, 0, 0, and you could write here value 0, 1, 0. In this case, you can see that only the value of one bit is changed here. So actually, M0 and M2 are considered adjacent. Similarly, you can also observe the same for the M4 and the M6. They are also uh, considered adjacent. Actually, in a K-map thing, you can consider that uh, this whole K-map is, you can say, combined in a rounded form like uh, this one. That the, both the edges are combined. If you combine this edge with this edge, then these two will become adjacent. Means M0 and M2 will become adjacent. Similarly, M6 and M4 will become adjacent. So now we will be also considering these two uh, and the adjacent one M0 with the M2 and M4 with the M6. Say so we have now example like this one. We have given a function like this 3, 4, 6, 7 means these main terms are value equal to 1. So in the first place, in the first step, we just put the value 1 here. 1, 1, 1 and one. We have put the one here. Now we will see that how many adjacent scales are formed. One is very clear. This one. And you see uh, in between them you can say that uh, its value is 0, 1, 1 here and 1, 1, 1 here. So the value of only the x value is changing between these uh, two adjacent scales. So we will ignore that value and the remaining value will become our minimized term. So we will get the end result here as y, z. Then we can see that there are two ones here. One is here and one is here. As we have seen that in the last slide that M4 and M6 are basically adjacent because only one value is varying between them. So we can consider them as adjacent. So if you consider them as adjacent, uh, we can write its value as say 1, 0, 0 and we could write it have 1, 1, 0. So basically here the value of the second variable which is why it is uh, changing here. So uh, we will ignore the value of uh, y here and the remaining result uh, which we will uh, get here is that x and z complement. So this is how uh, we will get the second minimized expression. We will just end them to get the final expression. So now we have considered this one and this one as adjacent. Now in this example, uh, we are given a, a Boolean function which is represented in form of falling mean terms. So in the first step, uh, what we do is uh, we will just uh, place a one in all these uh, boxes. We will get a one here in the one, then two, then four, five, and six. Uh, now we will be trying to minimize them uh, using uh, the three variable k-map. Uh, as uh, uh, you know, in the last slide we discussed that because these and these edges are combined in a rounded form, so it means that M2 is combined with M0 and similarly M6 can be combined with M4. And if you look at it in a more uh, broader way or broader perspective, you can see that uh, because in the three variable uh, k map, uh, first we, the step we need to do is we have to combine the maximum number of ones that are uh, present. Uh, the maximum number of one could be that all values or all min terms are equal to one. Uh, the second to that is that uh, only four have one, uh, but they must be adjacent. If you see that uh, by just visualizing them, we cannot see that four uh, scales that could be adjacent here. We cannot find them. But if you have a close look at that, uh, you can see that there are four uh, ones which could be called adjacent. Say, if you combine this one 
with this one because their edges are joined then these are joined these can be considered adjacent uh, so we have we form a larger square with half four which have four ones with this one and this one so if we combine all of them we will see that only uh, one variable will result in that and we see that because value of x is varying here 0 1 we will ignore it similarly the value of y is also changing it's 0 here and 1 here while only the z will remain constant in all these four terms so this four scares can be replaced by a single term which we express it as z complement and now we are left with only one box with have a value of one we can uh, combine it in with the adjacent one this one and uh, you can see that in this uh, system the value of z is changing here because z is 0 here and 1 here so we will we will ignore it the remaining will be 1 0 which is equal to x y complement so in this way this uh, a boolean expression is minimized because if you have a closed look at it we see that these edges are combined and they combinedly form a square of 4 which is a uh, give us a minimized term of 1 literal and by minimizing the next two boxes of 1 this m4 and m5 it will give us 2 literal term like this now in this expression uh, this example we will uh, be having an expression which is not represented in a main term form if you look at this expression it is not in a standard main term form because b is missing here c is missing here and similarly a is missing here so first we need to convert it into a main term form and then uh, we will be minimizing this expression actually we will now have to go the other way around or we will be doing the inverse from the k map term uh, we will be calculating, uh, try to calculate uh, these terms. Because uh, if you look at the uh, first uh, expression here as a complement C. And now you, you look at the map. It means that uh, there is a, it represents because two adjacent scares, because in two adjacent scares, the resultant uh, minimized term is always in form of two literals so if we have two ones adjacent ones then we combine them and minimize using them k map they will result in a, a single term having two literals like uh, this one so we know this uh, value is zero here and c is one here so we need to find the missing value uh, and if you see the reverse of uh, this one you can see that the value b is uh, missing here so if you have to find from the k map what you could do is you can see that the value of b must be changing so that's why its minimized term is represented as here if you look at this location it's zero here and c is a one in this one and this one so if you combine these put a one here and also add a one here what will it result? It will result in a form of uh, like this one. A complement. B complement. C or the next one is as A complement. B C. And you know that because both of these terms are 1, if we have add an adjacent scale like this one, this could be uh, represented as A complement C because value of B is changing in between those, uh, these two columns. So we will just ignore them. The remaining result will be equal to this. So actually this term, the first term in the expression is representing two ones at two different main terms. One main term is M1 and the second uh, main term uh, term uh, here is the m31 so we will be representing uh, here two uh, different uh, min terms here we will do the same uh, for the other expressions too 
uh, now for the next exp uh, next expression uh, we can uh, write it as write it as a complement b for the a complement b uh, you know that a is zero here it's one and the value of c is missing so we have to find the two scales with the value of c is varying but a and b is constant like this when a must be equal to zero and b should be uh, equal to one so a complemented is here it means it must be present in the first row then b is one in this one and this or this one so it means basically we can represent this a complement b expression in form of two ones one one is here which is already marked as one and the next one is marked as here so these two combinedly are representing this expression so we can also write them as uh, the separate expression as a complement b c or a complement b c complement so so from this term we got these two main terms from the first one we got these three uh, the uh, next one is a b complement uh, c means it is in the second row b complement c it means it would be lie here so this one is marked against the third one it is already in main term we don't have to calculate a separate term for now and now for the fourth one if you see that we are given value of b which is equal to 1 and c1 so the a is missing here so we need to determine the value of a in, do, in the two adjacent scale where the value of b and c are constant if you look at this way in these two boxes b and c here are 1 so the value of a is varying so actually this is representing these two ones here we will put a 1 here so now we have put the ones all the ones here and this expression the last one uh, could now be uh, represented as a complement b c plus a uh, uh, now we will not write the complement here a b c so if you now look at it we have five uh, different uh, main terms here one main term the first uh, main term is uh, this one this is the uh, second one uh, this is the third one actually it's the same because this and this are same so we don't have to write twice one we will only write it as one and then we have the uh, next uh, main term fourth main term as here again this is repeated and the fifth main term is represented here as uh, this one so we will place the five ones here so this is was the first step in which we have to express any given expression back to the k-map we are actually doing the reverse uh, process here that from the expression we had represented that how an actual k-map would have been so we have placed the ones all in all these uh, locations uh, now uh, what we need to do is we have put all the ones here now we will uh, we need to minimize uh, this uh, k map and for the minimization uh, we can see that uh, first that how many scares are combined we have to see first we have to see the maximum numbers of scares that could be combined here so if you see that you could uh, combine the four scares here so this will be uh, representing a single term and what uh, that uh, single term uh, will uh, would be equal to because we have can combine only in the power of uh, the two uh, so we could either combine two adjacent scale either four or eight so we have first uh, we have find the largest of these scares we found it uh, as here and then here before our uh, ones are combined here so we first uh, need to uh, combine and write the uh, ex uh, expression for all uh, these scares and if you uh, remember in the last slide we have discussed that uh, if we have in a three variable system four uh, scares are combined four adjacent ones are combined then that 
would correspond to a single variable and you see that in this case the value of a is changing so we will ignore that similarly the value of b is also changing here we will also ignore that so we will be only left with the c here similarly uh, now we will see that if any other four square is formed which is not formed here so we will move to the two ones you can see that the two ones are combined as adjacent square here and uh, they will be uh, representing here because the c is changing in between these uh, two uh, ones so we will get the final result here as a complement b so first we found out all the uh, min terms here and uh, then what we uh, did was uh, we uh, put all the ones on that min terms and then we combined them to form the minimized uh, term and which was uh, the end result was c plus a complement b so in this way uh, we have seen an other utilization of the k map because if the function is not given in a form of uh, the you can say a uh, standard min term form and then you first need to convert it into a min term and then uh, do the minimization process uh, can we do uh, read this uh, book uh, pages uh, for better understanding uh, we will be continuing with the uh, k variable for the uh, next lecture too thank you